For today's fashion shoot, we're going to gain inspiration from the wardrobe and use that to help inspire our choice of background and color of light. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and when I'm approaching a fashion shoot, I have to figure out where to start. What's my inspiration? What direction do I go? Because the problem is, is that there's never a right answer in photography. You have a million choices to choose from, and so what direction do you choose to go on your shoots? For example, if I'm photographing this piece of clothing, am I trying to create a character? Am I trying to tell a story? Am I trying to showcase the clothing? Am I supposed to make it feel like a certain season? I need to address these kind of questions ahead of time, and that helps inform my creative decisions. Now in this case, the wardrobe is beautiful saturated colors beautiful orange and there's magenta. And so what we decided to do is use the color palette of the wardrobe to inform all of our other creative decisions. All right, so looking at this wardrobe, first of all, it looks to me like something that could be a little summery, maybe a little, I could wear it on vacation, really rich colors. And so I know I want my light to be pretty sunny. I also know that those colors are really saturated, so I, I wanna emphasize that even more. And then when choosing a background color, you know, I go to color theory. Do I want to go for colors that are complements? Do I want to go for colors that are contrast? Do I want to go for colors that are in a similar hue? And so I decided that for this wardrobe, we would go for an orange background to pick up the orange in the piece. Specifically, this is a Savage Universal Tangelo background. So there's an orange and a Tangelo, and this one was a little bit closer to what we were seeing in the piece. Now so far that brings in the orange that she's wearing, but it doesn't really touch on any of those pink magentas. And so we decided to add that with light. And so I've added two rim lights into the scene, each with a pink gel. So the background brings into the dress as well as the light on the subject. So what I would like to do is build in the lights step by step so you can see what they're adding to the scene. We're going to begin with just our main light. In this case, it is a Profoto D2. And on the D2, we have one of my favorite hard light modifiers. It is a magnum reflector. A magnum reflector is a larger silver reflector. It's a hard light because it's direct, but then it bounces around in that silver dish. And it has a really nice finish in the inside so that it's hard, but still pretty smooth on the skin. This is one of my go-to light modifiers when I'm trying to emulate the feeling of sunlight, which is what I'm trying to achieve with this shot. All right, so let's take a look at the magnum reflector illuminating our subject with just that single main light on. All right, so that already looks beautiful, but can you see how crisp the light is on my subject's face? That's what you're getting from the magnum reflector, but it's still flattering because of the surface inside. Now, the background is looking nice and saturated, and it's clearly pulling from the colors of her wardrobe. Now, I could shoot the frame just like this, just with a single light source. And maybe if I thought the shadows were too dark, I could bring in a white V-flat, bounce a little more light into the shadows, or I could go for something like this and turn her face towards the sun, towards that main light, and have her kind of bask in the glow of that light. That is one approach, and it would be completely fine to go that direction. But, as I mentioned, I wanted to try to pull in some of the pink tones, pink hues in her piece, and so that's why we've added two small white umbrellas, one on either side of the background, and they have a pink gel. So I'm gonna turn those both on, and you can see what they're introducing to the scene. All right, so what I want you to pay attention to is the result that these rim lights had on the scene. So first of all, you see a little bit of highlight on her hair with that pink tone, and then you see a rim light of pink on the shadow side of the face. But you also notice that the background got a little bit brighter. It's also a little bit uneven. You can see that the light is kind of dappling across the scene. Now, if I wanted to have this be a little bit more even, I could adjust the position of the light and the feather of the light. But I actually think the unevenness makes the shot look a little less sterile. I think it makes it look a little bit more textured, a little bit more lived in. And so I find it to be visually appealing. All right, so got the magnum reflector, those two uh, white umbrellas with pink gels on them. And then the last part of the equation I added, which I still have, I already had on, was uh, black pro mist. This filter, what it does is it takes highlights and it makes them glow, it makes them bloom. And so in this case, what I can use it for is if the light catches a highlight, maybe on an earring or on her bracelet, you'll see that little glow to it. It also is really, really useful uh, if you have 
maybe that backlight peeking in the edge of the frame, it'll actually glow it out. I think this makes it a look a little bit more vintage and perhaps a little filmic in vibe, which is actually what I'm attracted to as I'm shooting this shot. All right, so let me just show you real quick what that looks like by, by the use of having this filter on, and then we're gonna put it all together. Great. All right, so take a look at these two shots. In the first shot, you can see that the bracelet that she has on is catching the light, and it's got this beautiful halation, this beautiful glow to it. And in the next shot, I actually came around to the side of her and shot more into the rim light on the left-hand side of the frame. There's a couple of things that you see happening, but you see they're a little bit more haze and glow, and that's from shooting into the light with a black pro mist. It is technically a, a little bit muddier. It's a little bit more imperfect. Even the shadows on the background are imperfect, but I think this is giving me more of that vintage vibe. So knowing that, and all of that being said, what I'm going to do now is work with pose, position of my camera angle. I'm also gonna change my height. I'm gonna get down low and shoot from further away for a full length shot. I'm gonna pop in close, uh, use a longer focal length for tight beauty shots. Maybe move around to the side to purposely try to get a little haze. Maybe to try to get some reflections off of that jewelry. Those are the sorts of things that I'm thinking as I do the shoot. Now for these images, I'm using my go-to camera and lens setup. I'm shooting the Canon R5 with the Canon RF 24 to 105 lens because then I don't need to pause as I go from full length to tight headshot. Okay, so I think those are all of the ingredients. Let's get the shot. All right, so can you actually bring the arm up, uh, your left arm up so I can get that bracelet in? Perfect. background and the color of light really helps to showcase this wardrobe. And so what I want you to keep in mind is whenever you go into a shoot, you have to ask yourself, what are you trying to achieve? Is there a character you're trying to showcase or a mood or a season or a collection or a color palette? And that helps you make the rest of your creative decisions. Now, by the way, the background that was used here is Savage Universal Tangelo. So it's this beautiful orange. But you might notice as I was shooting, the way that I light changed the way that that color looked. And so no matter what color background that you have, whether you throw more light at the background or maybe you feather the light away and allow it to go darker, that will actually shift how it reads to the camera. So be sure to experiment no matter what color you have because the way you light that background will make a really dramatic difference. Now, if you wanna see the gear used in the making of these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below and of course, visit adorama.com. Now I have many different videos some of them covering color theory, fashion photography, lighting, and more. So if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe because I have a lot more of these coming your way. See you next time, guys.